Are you a Twitch streamer that's putting out their content onto TikTok and Twitter and Instagram, but you're finding that nobody's watching it, nobody's clicking on it, liking it, commenting, and your content looks like this? Then you have found this video at the absolute perfect time because I want to help you elevate your videos, get them to stand out and look a bit more like this. He's on me, he's chasing me, he likes the taste of my flesh. Oh, juked him! No, I'm chasing him! I'm chasing him! <laughs> All right, you guys, so let's get into this. The very first thing that we want to do is we want to go and get a clip to edit. So I am on Twitch, and if you stream on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, there are similar features to get uh, your clips to edit. But I like to go to my VODs, so I have it pulled up here. I have a scene that we'll, we'll just use. Come on, baby, say you love me five, six, seven times. Do, 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 do. Beautiful singing. Uh, so this is a clip from when I was playing Among Us with some friends. But if I clip this this uh, movie marker here, I can now pull up a clip. And what's great about doing it this way, the rotation of impossible. Not only do we get to download this clip, super easy, uh, this actually goes to our highlights on, on uh, Twitch, so other people can watch it and see what kind of content you're creating. So this is the segment that I wanted to use. I was singing and then immediately got stabbed right after completing my task. But what's nice about this is that I can use these sliders to get the clip exactly where I want it, and I don't have to edit down however long my stream was. If it's like three hours worth of footage, I can just edit it down uh, using this clip feature, create a title, singing, and then click publish. So now that it's published, what I can do is I can click download right here, and this clip immediately gets downloaded straight to my computer. All right, so this right here is a very critical part of compiling your Twitch clips. I think it's very, very smart to keep things organized. No matter what you do, keep things organized. And I organize everything by game right now. Um, I'd like to organize things by also date, like timestamps and stuff like that. But right now, I'm just doing by the game that I'm playing. This way, if I want to go back and create a montage of, let's say, Among Us, all the funny Among Us clips, I got two, <laughs> but I, once I keep gathering more and more and more, I can go back and you know just edit all the pieces together and keep it nice and simple for me in the future. Because if you don't, if you don't do it that way, you do it like this, you have all the different clips together, you don't, you, it's really difficult to find everything. So keep that in mind, make it simple on yourself. And then I also have a TikTok output folder. This is basically just where I put my finished uh, videos. All right, so our very next step is we're gonna open up Adobe After Effects. Now I use Adobe After Effects uh, as opposed to like Adobe Premiere because I I don't like Adobe Premiere, I'll be honest. For stuff like this, um, you can't move your video clips around easily. It's difficult to add certain effects that I like to use. It's, it's just a clunky system. So if you want to have a smoother time, uh, I'd highly recommend using After Effects. And I understand that, you know, a lot of you probably aren't familiar with After Effects. So if you have any questions at all, if I'm going too quick, just let me know down in the comment section and I'll get back to you. We're gonna start by creating a new composition. So we'll click that. We want to make sure our width is 1080 and our height is 1920. This is going to make sure our video stays in a horizontal aspect ratio so that when you're looking at it on your phone, you don't have any black spaces anywhere on the screen. Second bit that we want to change is the frame rate. 60 frames is what I stream in. Uh, I do 1920, 1080, and I do 60 frames a second. Some of you guys are going to be doing 30 frames a second. If you're not sure, I'll show you how to find out in just a second. Uh, the duration, you want to make it somewhere between 30 seconds and 60 seconds. Um, anything longer than that, I feel like you kind of just lose people's attention. For this tutorial, I'm just going to do 30 seconds, and as we're editing, if it goes longer, we can always, you know, extend that time frame. No worries. But we're going to click OK. And now we see a horizontal box. So what we need to do now is import our footage. We're going to right click in this empty space, import file. And I have my game clip saved here. And this is what I was showing you guys earlier. You want to name everything. We're going to use a Dead by Daylight clip that I got the other day because it's hilarious and Halloween just passed. So why not, you know, keep the Halloween spirit alive. Now, remember when I was saying, uh, if you're not sure what FPS it is or the frames, you can actually see right here at the top right, it says 60.001 FPS frames per second. So let's say that the clip said 30 FPS and I already made my composition 60 FPS. You want to make sure that those are the same. So what I would do is I would click right here where it says comp one, because this is my composition. And then I would go to the top composition, composition settings, and I would just switch it here. I'd just go 30. 
and press OK. But since it is 60, I do want to make sure I keep it at 60. And now what we can do is we can import this footage into our composition here. So you just drag and drop. I like to put it right in the middle. And then here's a feature that I love so much, and this is why I like using After Effects over Adobe Premiere. If I left click on one of these angles and start dragging it out, I can scale the size of my footage really easily. But if I hold Shift, then I can keep it locked uh, so that it doesn't, you know, so it doesn't stretch in a weird way. But I'm gonna stretch this out so that it reaches the edges of the screen, like that, and then I'm gonna let go. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click down here on the bottom left on that footage, hold Control, press the letter D, and it's gonna duplicate the footage. So now I have two different layers, like that. I'm gonna press Control Z to undo what I just did. Um, but what we're gonna do now is we're gonna make sure that we click on the bottom layer of the footage, and again, we're gonna click on this box, hold shift so that it scales proportionately, drag it all the way to the edges, and let go. Now what we wanna do with this bottom clip is we wanna make it blurry. So we want to go here to effects, go to blur and sharpen, and we want to find Gaussian blur. Click that, and then it's gonna bring up the, uh, the settings for that effect. And we wanna make sure that this is set to a relatively high number, so, I, I mean, I like to use, personally, I like to use 10. I think 10 is a nice blurry factor. If you zoom in, see how it's, it's nice and blurry and then your center focus is crisp. I think that looks great. So after doing that, I mean, if you wanna stop here, this is good to go. You could post this on TikTok or you could post this on Twitter, Instagram. Um, what I would do to make this look a little bit better, a little bit uh, more polished is I would take this text tool, this T, click that, and then click right in uh, anywhere on the uh, video and I would include my stream site. So if I'm streaming on Twitch, I type in twitch.tv backslash you there VMK. This way people know where to find me. Then if I press the arrow at the top left here again, I can position my text to where I want it to be. Let's say that the font might be a little bit too crazy or it might be you know too big or too small. If you click the text tool again, triple click on the text scroll down or up until you see characters and here's where you can control the font uh, the font itself you do you know whatever you want to do i like using toy box i think that's a really thick and bold font for uh, seeing on a smaller phone you can change the font size here by clicking and dragging to the left or the right i'm going to make it eh, right about there 70, 78 seems like a decent size for me you can control the colors. So this left one here is the fill color. That's all what's on the inside. So you can make it whatever color you want. And then the outside color, if you have it selected, that is like the border. Now, if you're changing the color and you notice that you don't see anything happening, you know, you don't see any colors changing, it might be that your width size is at zero. So see how it's at zero here? This, these three bars and I'm changing the colors, so I don't see anything. So make sure that this is at a decent size. I like to use five, because anything that gets a little bit too big, you know, starts to get smushed. So five uh, or less, depending on the font that you're using, uh, five is generally a good one to use. But, um, so I'm scrolling in and out with my middle mouse wheel, by the way, if, if you're wondering how I'm zooming in and out. And then to move around like this, I'm clicking in my mouse wheel and uh, just moving my mouse. So that's that helps you position around. That's another feature that Adobe Premiere doesn't have. You can't really move around the canvas easily, and I think there's a lot of different uh, perspectives that you can get in After Effects. Uh, but I'm babbling, so if you like the way that this looks, there you go. So like I said, we're pretty much done here. I think that looks very clean. I think that looks great if you're gonna upload that. Um, the last thing that we need to do is I just wanna show you guys how to export this footage. So if you're brand new, new to uh, After Effects, Excuse me. These bottom clips here are our footage. So you can see after it hits 14 seconds, footage disappears. We don't want that. We want to end our we want to end our composition as the footage is uh, done playing. So what we can do is find the last frame here, just clicking and dragging up here where the numbers are, and then if you hold Shift your cursor will lock literally at the very last spot. Now I'm gonna press the letter N on the keyboard, 
and it, see how it brings this end, this end cap, it brings it inwards. That makes it so that it trims down our composition to this area. Uh, to make things look cleaner, what I like to do is I right click on this, this uh, white spot or this gray spot, do trim comp to work area, boom. So now the composition is good to go. And if we're happy with it, we can scrub through. We can we can watch it. So let's see you want. Let's see you added another effect or a text, and you want to see how it looks. You can just press the play button. So there is one more thing that I forgot to mention. Uh, it was really loud. <laughs> so when you're stacking your clips like we did, because one of them is our blurred effect, you wanna make sure that you're not also stacking the audio. So on the left side, hopefully my head's not blocking it, but you should be able to see these two speakers. Basically what we did was we doubled the audio because it's the exact same clip, but one's just blurry and one's normal. So make sure that you at least silence one of these by turning off that speaker. Okay, so this clip is pretty much done, ready, good to go. So to render this out, to get it ready to post, what I would do is I'd go to composition at the top left here, go to add to render queue, press Q in AME, and the reason that we do that, oh, now it brought up the, uh, the Adobe Media Encoder. The reason that we're doing this is that it's going to take our video file and make it as small as possible, but keeping all of the high quality that we want. And so then I should see something like this, so the export settings. So if I click on format here, you just want to scroll down until you see H.264. Click that. Make sure it says match source high bitrate. And, uh, and then if you want to change the output name, I highly recommend doing that. And then making sure that you save your clips in a spot that is easily accessible. But once you do all that, uh, at the bottom here, it'll show you estimated file size, 17 megabytes. That's super tiny, super, super tiny, itty bitty. And then you press okay. You'll come over here to this play button, you press play, and then it'll immediately render out your footage. All right, so your video is rendered and it's that's pretty much it. So what you can do now is you can upload the footage to your email send that video to your phone, and then you can upload it to TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, stuff like that. There is another tutorial I would like to create for this that's a little bit more advanced. It has a little bit more eye-catching quality to it, but mainly this video is to help out a lot of you newer streamers that, you know, you don't have a brand yet. You don't have a logo. You don't know exactly the direction that you're taking. You have your, your, your Twitch footage. That's pretty much all you got. This is to help you kind of step up and, and be seen above some of the other footage and the other clips that are that are out there on social media. So if this video helped you out, definitely give it a like. Uh, subscribe down below if you'd like to see this newer advanced tutorial. I'll put that out sometime soon. And leave me a comment on things that you'd like to see. If you have any questions, uh, let me know. And uh, thanks for watching.